Welcome to Faith Revival Holiness Church, also Faith Revival Place International. I'm your host, Minister and Prophet M.G. Mays. Let us begin in prayer. Father, we love you, we cherish you, we thank you, Father. Bless this day, bless this evening. Father, we love you, and whether what situation we are, if we put our trust in the one that is trustworthy of all things, which is you, God, that we always will have victory, maybe not the way we want it or maybe over some, but we will have victory one way or another. And we thank you, Father. We praise you for all things. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Today's sermon is called Loving Our God Yahweh. Loving Our God Yahweh. Amen. He loves us and we need to love him back. Amen. It's important. Let's go to 1 John. All of jo Yo, come on. Chapter 5, verse 1 through 5. And it says, Anyone who loves that loves, I mean, any anyone who believes that Yeshua is the Messiah uh, has God as his Father. And anyone who loves the Father loves his offspring too. Here's how we know that we love God's children. When we love God, when we love God, we also do what he commands. For loving God means obeying his commandments. Moreover, his commandments are not burdensome because everything which has God as the Father overcomes the world. And this is the what is victorious, overcoming the world, our trust. Who does overcome the world if not the person who believes that Yeshua is God? Amen. Praise God. So, so let us be overcomers through obeying God's commandments, therefore loving God with all our hearts, so mind, and strength. Amen. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 6 through 18. To them, and it means word, the book of word. And it says, I am Yahweh, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the, he brought us out of sin, amen, where you lived as slaves. You are to have no other gods before me. You are not to make yourself uh, serve a graven image or any kind of respect of anything in heaven above on earth below or water below the seashore you are not to bow down to them or serve them for I Yahweh or your God am a jealous God punishing the children from the sins of their parents also third and fourth generations of those who hate me but Display grace to thousand generations for those who love me and obey my mitzvah. You are not to misuse the name of Yahweh your God because Yahweh will not leave unpunished someone who mistreats his name. Amen. Observe the day of the Sabbath, which is the seventh day. To set apart as holy, as Yahweh your God ordered you to do. You have six days to, to labor and do what you work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath. For Yahweh your God, on it you are not to do any kind of work. Not you, not your son, not your daughter, not your male or female employees. Not your ox, not your donkey, any of your livestock, or not foreigners staying with you inside your gate or property, so that your male and female servants can rest just as you do. You are to remember that you were once a slave in the land of Egypt. Amen. But we're no longer slaves to sin, right? And Yahweh your God brought you out from there with a strong hand. Out, outstretched arm. Therefore, Yahweh your God ordered you to keep the day of the Sabbath to remember what God does for us. 
the other six that we work and do things. Amen. Through remembrance of what he's done in the past on this day of relaxation and and worshiping the Lord in, in an even more intensely way. Amen. So these are the four of loving God and, and the last six great statements, great commandments are loving your fellow humanity. Honor your father and mother as Yahweh your God ordered you to do so that you will live long and have things do well with you in the land of Yahweh your God is giving you. Do not murder. It doesn't say do not kill. It says do not murder. Murdering is someone that's innocent for and you you murder them. Killing is killing a deer or or a cow for food or or uh, protecting your family from someone that will murder you. There's a difference. Do not commit adultery. That is, there's spiritual adultery and there's natural adultery. So be careful. Do not steal. Don't even steal a pen out of the credit union. Ask for it. Do not steal. Do not give false evidence against your neighbor. That means when a judge gives false evidence, false evidence on you when it's not true do not give false evidence amen do not covet your neighbor's wife do not covet your neighbor's house his field uh, male or female slave, uh, employees or ox donkey anything that belongs to your neighbor so it would behoove you judges not to covet other things of other peoples that belongs to them and make a story it doesn't or someone else that does something else do not covet amen and this this going by going to first uh, Corinthians I love Corinthia chapter 13 verse 4 through 10 all right are we there and it speaks and saith, Love is patient and kind, not jealous, not boastful, not proud, rude, or, or selfish, not easy, uh, uh, angered. And it keeps no record of wrong. Love does not gloat over other people's sins, but takes a delight in truth. Love always bears up, always trusts, always hopes, and always endures. Love never ends. Amen. So we need to love God with these values and love your fellow man with these values that God is showing us through his word here. Amen. Now let's continue by going to James uh, chapter 2 verse 5 through 13. Uh, Yaakov is in Hebrew. And it says, Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, haven't God chose the poor of the world to be rich in faith and receive the kingdom which I he promised to those who he loved? But you d despise the poor, ain't the rich, the ones who oppress you and drag you into court, aren't they the ones who insult the good name of him whom you belong? If you truly attend to the goals of the kingdom of the Torah and in confidence with the passage of saying, loving your neighbor as yourself, you are going to do well. But if you show favoritism, you actions consult sin, since you are convinced under the Torah of transgression. So when we when we go into the things of sin, we must repent, or we have to answer. And the things that are in the Torah that are that condemn those things that we would do we would be condemned over that until we ask for repentance and it's through loving god that we can quickly go back to doing what's right amen 
And so let us go now to John, Yokomon. Ch chapter 14, verse 15 through 21. Amen. And the scripture saith, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you, uh, you another co uh, comforting counselor like me, the spirit of truth to be you with you forever the, the the world cannot receive him because he is neither seen nor known to him you know him because he is staying with you and you will be united with you and i will be uh, leaving you i will not be leaving you orphans and i am coming to you in just a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You will live, and when that day comes, you will know that I am united and with myself. And you will be, and I will with you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And the one who loves me will be loving my other, my the Father. And I will love him and reveal himself to him. Amen or her. So we need to love God. You see how love is, the, is a protection over us in these last days. But just don't go into religious love or worldly love or lust you got to understand re religious love is not God's love okay and that's what you've been that's what a lot of the church has been panding off is religious love not God's love love the real love is laying your life no greater love than lay your life down for your neighbor but until you love God there's no such thing as real love until you start loving God and and doing what he wants amen and through that other things develop let's go to hebrews because we brew the coffee ladies 12 or t at that matter 12 verse 25 and 29 could be t um sometimes t works huh um okay And the scripture saith, See, you don't reject the one speaking, for if those for if those did not escape who rejected him when he gave divine warning on the earth, think how much less we will escape if we turn away from him when he warns from heaven, even then his voice shakes the earth but now he has made his promise one more time I will shake it not only the earth but the heavens too are you listening and this please one more time makes clear that the things shaken are removed since they are created things so that the things that are not shaken may sh remain therefore since we have received an unshakable kingdom let us have grace with with we will offer service that will please God and re reverency and fear for indeed our God is a consuming fire amen our god is a consuming fire amen the god of abraham isaac and jacob amen and isaiah and, and and um and elijah amen we serve a mighty god amen so let us take courage my brothers and sisters in the days that we have let us take courage in the Lord of hosts for he's the one 
to look after us. Let's go to 1 John, all of y'all come on, verse 3 through 1 through 2. See that the love of the Father has lavished on us, is letting us be called God's children. Amen. For that is what we are. What What is God saying we are? We're God's children. Amen. The reason the world does not know us is that it does not know the word of God, the, the Messiah. Dear friends, we are God's children now, and it has not yet been made clear that what we will become. We do know that when he appears, we will be like him, like the word, like the Messiah. Amen. Because we will see the word of God, the Messiah, as it literally is. That means physically. Not just in the spiritual way that we're attaining to, but physically also. Amen. So let us go now to the closing scripture. Hebrews. Hebrews the coffee. Hebrews the tea. Hebrews all the good stuff. So you remember that later. Okay. Chapter 13, verse 5 through 8. And it says, keep living, uh, keep your lives free from the love of money, which is a hard deal for a lot of people. But we got to, you got to understand, keep yourself free from making it more than a tool. That would be what it would say in English of today. Okay. So don't make money into something it's not. Just keep it as a tool and and do not glorify it. That would be the basic English of today's language. Amen. And and be satisfied with what you have. For God himself has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. Therefore, we say with confidence, Yahweh is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can human beings do to me? Nothing. We got to answer that question. Nothing. Because God is with us. Who can be against us? Amen. It goes right back to the first part of that. Amen. You notice they complement back and forth. This right here. Yahweh is my helper. And I will not be afraid. What can human beings do for me? To me because God is our helper and we don't have to be afraid amen and, and the reason why God is a helper is so that others can't do us harm if we trust in the Lord even if we go through a hard time even if something happens it's always that if but God is greater than the if I F. God's greater than that. And so the Lord can take care of us. And all he wants us to do and learn today is love God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. Lean not unto your own understandings. Keep the ways of the Lord and prosper thereof. Amen. God's the God of all things. He has everything. In his hands. So what do we need to be afraid of? Even if the world went. In. In chaos you never heard of. We're going to be fine. Because even if we lose. This physical body. We're going to gain so much more. In the arms of God. Amen. So what do we have to lose. But not. Uh, not m much. If we do, it's because we did it on our own. We need to do it on God's timings, God's ways, and see that God has all plans for our lives. Everything that God has for us, he's going to finish and accomplish in our lives. Do you trust God or you trust in mere men and women that have not the answer, but they say they do, but on their own under their breath they go, "He he, we got him under our 
are trans. But God says, no longer will we be this way. We will love our God and trust in Him and trust in what He commands us to do. That is good and holy and, and rich in grace and mercy that we can never count our measure. This is what God has in store for us. And this time of great uncertainty in this world, we must trust God. We must seek his face. God is saying, stand up for righteous sake, O church. Stand up for righteous sake, O sin of God. For I'm the one that takes care of you, O Israel. I'm the one that takes care of you, church and sin of God. These are the days of end. But do not be afraid. Do not settle in. For the settling in is what becomes lukewarm. But those that don't put their tent pegs of settling in, but remove those tent pegs and they follow the ways of the Spirit of God wherever it leads. Those are the ones that I'm very proud of. For I have called you out this day, O churches and synagogue, kingdom of Israel. Stand fast in my ways and you will go through many things, says the Lord of hosts. If you only seek me, I will you will find me and you will be blessed indeed. There's you have nothing to lose, so church and synagogue. So you need to follow God's ways. Because you will lose every time when you go the ways of this world. And that's the truth. That's the bottom line. God loves us, so we need to love him back and trust in him in these difficult times. Amen. Remember the people, your brothers and sisters of the past. When they needed something, they prayed with everlasting faith to God and and everybody laughed at him. And, and the Lord spoke and said, now believe it. And receive it like measure. And they were receiving what they needed at the right time of needing it. These are the days where you got to put your faith out there with God and, and love and respect and, and um, loving his commandments. And, and saying, now, Lord, you know, you spoke in your word that these were the we're going to be living in the last days that we are living now and that now you got provision if we will only love and trust you and respect you God as you well do and and things and miracles that you need to happen when you don't got money God's going to get it for you when you don't have what you need for your family and it's emergency God's going to make a way where there's no way do you do you understand it starts with loving God and, and respecting his teachings in this work and what he's doing personally with his spirit inside of you giving you the right strength the right ways to go forth and do mighty things in these last days don't you sit on the couch when there are so many people that are dying and going to hell. Save one of them from going to hell through faith, through testimony, what God's done in you. Amen. God loves you. And keep praying and keep interceding in behalf of anybody that needs it at that time. And remember, when we are not what to say, the Spirit of God will speak through us. Amen. Now, I want to speak to you Arabs. Uh, you know what? God loves you. And you know what? God wants you saved today. And God wants you to become a holy Arabic people, you Arabs, that are going to get saved today. You sure are going to get saved today. You hear me? You're going to get saved today, Arabs. You're going to get right with the Lord. Christians and Jews that go to church, but that's about it, or synagogue. God wants you to become the synagogue, become the church, become the temple of God. God's got a plan for you wherever you are. 
but you got to surrender your life to the Lord. Are you ready to surrender and get saved and get right with God and get the garments of filth off you and a garment of righteousness on you? Amen. Put the crown of salvation on your head instead of a, a, a jester crown off you and put a crown of, of gold of salvation on you. Amen. God wants you to be right with him today. Are you ready? P repeat this prayer and just pray with your heart. Pray with your heart with this prayer. Dear God Yahweh, I ask you into my spirit, soul, and body as Lord and Savior of my life. Love you very much, Yeshua Jesus. Amen. Praise God. If you prayed that prayer, the Lord God Almighty has saved your soul. And, and he heard your heart, your heart of wanting to serve God and wanting to get rid of the past and start a brand new you today. Amen. And God has heard your heart. Amen. And praise God. Let me pray for you further. Father, I pray for Psalms 90, 107, 119. Father, let them have their breakthrough moment today and let it continue till we see you face to face oh god almighty i i pray for them to be baptized in water as well as baptized in the fire of the holy ghost right now the fire of the holy ghost right now flow on you and and a new river of life in your heart in your mind right now and i thank you father and your mighty presence, holy name, the name above all names, Yeshua Jesus, our Yahweh of the heavens, we pray. Amen. Now be healed. Be healed in the name of Yeshua. I curse the cancer. I command it to go and to go to nothing and to be restored. The, the restoration in there. Re restoration in, in, in the, the uh, no more headaches. No more uh, uh, hard problems. Uh, uh, legs are being mended. And things that are, are, are miracles and signs and wonders. And people will be able to walk better. The people will be able to. Uh, the addictions are going to fall off of you. And all these things that are binding you will be gone because the Prince of Peace is coming on you right now, Yeshua Jesus, the one that died on the cross for you, has also paid a price to, to help you with these sicknesses and diseases and troubles and, and things that happen in this life. Not because you did it personally. Although 10% sometimes is that way. But the 90%, it, it's, it's because we live in this unperfect world. And that's why we need God. We need to huddle together, anoint each other with oil and of gladness, like the Bible says, and, and, and say, yes, Lord, to your will. Yes, Lord, to God's will on our life. Amen. So God loves you and God wants a to do great things in you and he'll continue to do great things let me pray for the shalom prayer shalom 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 wholeness brings peace the past is all understanding nothing severed nothing broken because the king of peace has come unto you today yeshua jesus and the lord god may his light Light your wick, and may you be a little lighthouse, a testimony of the Lord wherever we go. Shalom to you. God loves you. And God's made us great because he's great. And so let's let the greatness out, church. Let's become great again. Let's become great again, synagogue. Now, I, there's people that say, oh, well, the church is already great. No. Let's become great. If we became great like God wants us to through Scripture, do you think a lot of things would be going on in our cities and towns of today? The answer is N-O. Nope. So let's become great again. Let's become great again. Let's become great again in the Lord, our first love. And God's going to do great things. 
because he's the one that makes us great. So we're going to get a hold of that greatness and excellence of life through the Lord. And we're going to do great things. Amen. God loves you. I love you. And let everything have breath. Praise God. Amen. Shalom to you.